okay, okay, shut up, everybody. <laughs> so Trump's week was about as good as the Democrats' week was bad. First, you have the State of the Union. Dare I say it? Pretty good. And I hate State of the Unions more than I hate children. <laughs> But it was a solid positive assessment of the world, strong economy, jobs, foreign policy. Plus, it had something for everyone. On one side, there was more cash for defense. On the other, paid family leave. On one side, a defense of the unborn. On the other, second chances for the incarcerated. So every gift to the right had something for the left. It was more balanced than me when I'm on my meds. <laughs> And that must have really confused some people. Enough to forget how to clap. Seriously, what was Pelosi thinking? Hmm. This Dr. Seuss really has something here. The One fish, two of fish, red fish, blue fish. Oh, and the brilliant. Good. Oh, shoot, it's time to clap. Oh, I forgot how to clap. Somebody needs new software. The best part, Trump attacking a disease that's making a comeback among doe-eyed Dems. I wonder if he's alarmed by new calls to adopt socialism in our country. We are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free, and we will stay free. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. Ugh, that stings. You know, it hurts some feelings, like this guy. I wonder, <laughs> wonder, wonder what he was thinking. Turkey salad, there's a good sandwich. Chicken salad, overrated. Why don't they make a salad that's a sandwich instead of a sandwich that's a salad? That should be in my new campaign. Salads, they can be sandwiches. So true. But there was a softer side to Trump. AIDS research, experimental drug legislation, treatments for sick kids. If he got any nicer, we'd have to revoke his Republican status. <laughs> But it wasn't like the crowd was having it. Nope. For the most part, Trump couldn't crack a smile from this fighting force of dental hygienists. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. They were wearing white as a symbol of solidarity about the women's right to vote, which I can safely say I am for, okay? For now. But every time I looked at them, I felt like I was about to get my teeth cleaned. <laughs> Thankfully, I already had them cleaned. Here's tape. Painful. Wrong tape. Here's tape of my last dental visit. <laughs> I hope that's not my brush. <laughs> One more. That's Dr. Steve, very thorough for an otter. <laughs> so Trump offered something for everyone. He went after Russia, China. He announced another meeting with North Korea. So did the media like it? Surprise, no. <laughs> Everything else he said in this speech will be overshadowed by the fact that he said there cannot be investigations. That the president of the United States at this moment in the world did mm -hmm. not mention climate change in even a sentence is just frankly a disgrace. What he represented tonight is someone with absolutely no attachment to anything he says. The dangers of the brown menace, as I call his depiction. It was so grandiose and over the top. It was brown scare. I saw this as a, as a psychotically incoherent speech with cookies and dog poop. <laughs> cookies and dog poop. I know what Ben and Jerry's is making next year. <laughs> Anyway, so what's with all the bile? It's the business plan. For them to succeed, Trump has to fail. And there was just too much compromise to make the conflict stick, which doesn't help the media, which can only profit from anger toward Trump. 
It's the most obvious explanation for the current state of affairs. Add the media to every pot and the meal stinks because conflict and profit are joined at the hip. The media business model to be an eternal stirrer of <laughs> kids in the audience. They're like weird, they're like weird volunteer firemen who start fires so they can put them out. The media creates unrest so they can write about it later. And the angrier we feel toward our fellow Americans, the better the bottom line is for CNN and MSNBC. And then, get this, add one more problem. It's the Dems, not Trump, who are truly effing up. That's one upside for everyone having a bad week. <laughs> the Dems have had it worse. Between Liz Warren and the entire Virginia Democratic Party, I'd say the only people who had it worse was anyone who ate Dana Perino's queso. <laughs> So while Trump's been, been a two-year target of pseudo-scandal dodgeball, the Dems are soaking in the real stuff. No wonder Adam Schiff is running down the street in his underwear screaming tax returns. It's a deflection. The party's in trouble. Mueller's giving them zilch. Trump's doing fine. So they have no choice but to bang pots and pans all around the house like a 10-year-old high on Pop Rocks <laughs> and hope that maybe the media pays attention, which they will. Here's your week if you're a Democrat. You began with late-term abortion, then right into blackface, followed by sexual assault accusations, then more blackface, then more assault allegations. Could this get any worse? If Virginia's Democratic Party takes credit for Dana's queso, then yes. <laughs> but you know what? They wouldn't even do that. <laughs>
the, the, to the heartbreaking thing about State of the Union was that it was really good, mm -hmm. and you just think to yourself, okay, so you can, to Trump, you can do it. <laughs> yes. You can do this if you want to. You can actually give a speech that's kind of sweet and sentimental and stuff, mm -hmm. and still patriotic. a little bit fiery and patriotic. Yeah. You could actually be like a really cool, chill, <laughs> together, emotionally stable person. <laughs> so let's just do more of that, right? Because the brilliant thing when he said this country will not be a socialist country is that you could hear the Democrats in the audience saying, the hell it will. <laughs> like, he's got them so wired. Yes. Like, they, they arrive to that thing. You ever make a call to, like, the cable company mm -hmm. or the cell phone company, and you're, like, you're, you're pre-irritated? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you're yes. just so mad, and you're calling, and you're, like, you just know that you're going <laughs> to yell. At, and then the person on the other line is, like, super reasonable, and they solve your problem in, like, two minutes. Yes. Uh, but you're still really mad? Yes. <laughs> that was the Democratic caucus yeah. Yeah. in that room that night. The villain wasn't what it, he, he cracked up to yeah, be. Yeah, so yeah. mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just had to look at it with yeah. a frown. Uh, Kat, is it possible for compromise if, if it doesn't serve the interests of the media? No, I don't think compromise is going to happen. <laughs> no. No. Mm -hmm. There are things that people should have been delighted about. For example, sitting there, we had Matthew Charles, mm -hmm. we had Alice Marie Johnson, mm -hmm. who are free now because of Trump. Right. Yeah. And only because of Trump. Yeah. Because I read about it, and that is how pardons work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, special report. Again, I bring the facts. <laughs> um, it's wonderful. There's so many people in prison who are shouldn't be there, or they're there for too long, and there's two of them that are free now. Everyone should have been saying how amazing that was. There's a lot of things. Low unemployment. Could have clapped for that. But they were just so mad just because they just don't want him to do anything right. And if there's that kind of environment, I don't see how compromise would be possible. Yeah. Unfortunately. Mm. What about you, Tyrus? You know what? I enjoyed my favorite part was when uh, Buzz Aldrin was on there. Yes. Yeah. And there was a USA chant. Yes. Yeah. And that was awesome. And the, you know, the, it, the whole room was chanting USA. Yeah. For like six seconds, we were a united country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm glad. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, everyone was USA. It wasn't like half the room going USA, not on my watch. Like yeah. it was, everybody was involved. So at that moment, I was like, wow, we can be unified. That's like, such a low agree. bar, though. Like, oh, I'm glad our country likes our country. Did I interrupt you? <laughs> yeah. Well, what world have you been living in? Because our country dislikes our country immensely. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they were able to come together on kids, how many consonants? Two and a vowel. Three things they could agree on. Yeah. Some letters. And we already established that those were letters. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's all we could agree on. It's and a happy birthday. Remember? Kind and of. Happy birthday to the uh, whole country. And Cuts the right other part, if I could get Survivor. there, Greg and Kat, damn. Um, <laughs> it's so bad between yeah. the sides. This was my point before I was interrupted. The response from the Democrats was pre-recorded. Yes, it was. Which means even a response to a speech They've already made up their mind. Right. Hell no. So they pre recorded it so they could all go to Chili's and enjoy queso <laughs> and talk about how bad the country is. Like, that's how bad it is. So, yeah, I know it's, it was just USA, but that was probably the last time mm -hmm. or the first time in a long time that we've seen both sides do it's something unifying. It's a good point. You know, I think it, w it was pre written and she didn't even watch the speech. Do you know that? She didn't watch the speech. Well, oh, she has speech. to. Yeah. yeah. If you pre-recorded it, then you can go to the bar. Yeah, that is true. And I think of that. <laughs> what am I doing here?